This Heat Celtics series has been one of the hardest to predict in terms of game to game. On one hand, there's the Miami Heat, the great underdog story continuing to make history, a team that snowballed all throughout these playoffs, beating the odds time and time again with major contributions from undrafted players. On the other, we have the Boston Celtics, who undoubtedly have more talent, and yet they trailed this series 3-0, dropping their first two home games in mind-boggling fashion. Fast forward to today, and the Celtics have found some life after winning games four and five. Neither game has really given us the best of both teams at the same time. And with game six in Miami tonight, I wanted to take a look at why this series has been so painfully difficult to figure out. Game one was a Miami Heat blitzkrieg in Boston, where Miami shot an insane 51.6% from three. But besides Jimmy's obviously great performances in these playoffs, this type of offensive production has been made possible because of two very important things that need to happen if Miami wants to come out of this series alive. Dribble penetration and an aggressive Bam Adebayo. When the guys around Jimmy and Bam are initiating offense, it lets opposing defenses know that they have to guard all over the floor. If nobody's standing around just waiting for Jimmy or Bam to make something happen, this makes the heat harder to defend throughout the course of a game. It's a simple concept, but it's something even the Celtics, who are second in offensive rating in the playoffs, were not doing well until the last couple of games they won. In all of these clips, notice that no matter who gets a touch, the Heat are making something happen. This forces the Celtics to have to communicate, and it challenges their defensive execution over and over again. Eventually, defenses will rotate to help on drives, which results in some difficult decision making, because the penetration gets you dump off passes to BAM or kickouts to open shooters. You add threat number one in the scouting report, which is Jimmy Butler, and all of a sudden, the Celtics have a handful of problems to deal with. Bam is not someone that's gonna shoot the lights out, but by just making a move in any form of dribble penetration, any sign of being assertive, this is gonna keep the Celtics on their toes because of the clear physical advantage he has over everyone except maybe Robert Williams. Bam is not a very polished post scorer, but his quickness and athleticism allows for some really good opportunities alone. Despite Bam's limited ball handling skills, he can really get downhill on fast break chances. We know the Celtics play a lot of small ball, five out lineups, which is a clear offensive advantage for Bam. When he gets aggressive, it causes the defense to collapse to compensate for their lack of rim protection. This is either going to cause foul trouble for the Celtics in single coverage or leave shooters wide open when they decide to help. But game one was still looking good for the Celtics up until a third quarter collapse, where they allowed 46 points and the Heat stayed in control pretty much the rest of the way. You throw in the fact that the Celtics had a turnover party of 15, a bad shooting night from three, and game one was a wrap. Game two comes along and the Celtics decide to stick to the game plan of just shooting more threes in hopes that eventually the shots will go in. Unfortunately for them, look at this shot chart. Some of these were good looks that just didn't fall, but a lot of them were awful shot selection and the clear disregard for trying to get to the rim, along with another 15 turnovers, is what costed them this game as well. The Miami Heat shot average from three, but stuck to their game plan of constant dribble penetration, cutting off the ball, and an aggressive bam at a bio throughout the game. It stood the test of time during all of the Celtics shot chucking for a game to win. Game three comes along and the Celtics decided they were just gonna keep shooting more threes. They shot 29 in game one, 35 in game two, and in this one, they shot 42 of them. Look at this disgusting three-point chart. 26% from three was the result. A historically bad Celtics three-point performance was greeted by this historically great Miami three-point performance. The Heat stuck to their guns continuing great dribble penetration against the Celtics team that looked as disconnected as ever. It didn't take much film study to tell you how Miami won this game. Just look at this barrage of demoralizing threes.
Celtics are on the verge of a sweep as they head into game four in Miami, and everyone, including myself, figured this one would be a wrap. Up until game four, the Celtics were averaging an awful 29.2% from three, and they were really chucking shots, which made me wonder when a good shooting night would come. The Celtics shot even more threes in game four, but this time around, shots were made. Game four was the first time I saw the Celtics play their brand of basketball. Dribble penetration, faster decision-making, more ball movement, and the glaring difference above all of this was their defense. This was only a matter of time, but the problem is that we might be seeing it a little too late. The Celtics lost three games before looking like the team we thought would be leading the series at this point. And speaking of time, the Heat have been hotter than usual throughout these playoffs, and it was only a matter of time before we saw them cool off a little bit. And unfortunately for them, it was icy. 25% from three and 43% from the field in what was their overall worst effort in this series. Bam was not aggressive in game four whatsoever. Look at his game two shot chart compared to his game four shot chart. And it's all you need to know about the kind of night he had. This is not the Bam that gives the Heat a fighting chance. Celtics go back for game five in what most people expected to be a Celtics win to shift the pressure on Miami to close in their final home game in this series. Game five was exactly that. Celtics clearly looked like the team we saw all season long, getting to the rim, finding each other with great passes out of drives, shots falling of course, but everyone actively making something happen whether on or off the ball. Defensively, the Celtics were just way more connected. This game five gave the Miami Heat a huge reason to believe if they don't close this series at home in game six, game seven in Boston looks incredibly unlikely. But the Heat have been the underdog kings all postseason long, so of course anything is possible. I'll be at game six tonight, and I can't wait to see what happens. The Heat need an aggressive bam, a focused Jimmy Butler, and the role players to stay active when the ball finds them. The Celtics need to start strong, stay confident, and trust each other on both ends if they want a chance at pushing this series to seven. Thanks for watching this quick video. This is the All Things Basketball Podcast. I'm your host, Vic Lopez, as always, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.